Welcome to Illustrated Beards, brought to you by the Fantasy Shop, best in comics and games since 1981. I am Jason. My co-host for the evening is the very lovely Jams. Oh, am I lovely? Lovely. I like to think that I am. Hi, I'm Jams. <laughs> uh, we've chosen some excellent stuff. We are going to review Cataclysm Ultimate's Last Stand number five, which is the conclusion of the Cataclysm story. Uh, brand new number one from Marvel, Fantastic Four number one. The trade we have chosen is an oldie but a goodie. Flash Rebirth from way, way back. From, from way yonder, back. way back. <laughs> um, so, as we always do, we will start with you, Jams, and Fantastic right. Four uh, number one. Just read this. It is the first Fantastic Four thing I've ever read. I like the story. I mean, it's it's a first issue. You're kicking it off as a first issue. You're just learning about what they've been doing, what they're going to be doing, and all that. The story starts out just them fighting Fen Feng Feng Foom. See, and and that's that's my problem. You know, I was saying earlier, and, I, and I'll say it here. Uh, Fantastic Four number ones, they've done, they've relaunched the series a couple of times, and even going back to when the series very first launched back in the 60s, mm -hmm. they, they always follow that same formula. They've used it like five, six times. Every time they do a Fantastic Four number one, it always starts out with them yeah. fighting some big monster in downtown Manhattan. How would, how would you rather it start? I just don't think that recycling that formula, I mean, they keep canceling Fantastic Four and then bringing it back and then canceling it and then bringing it back. Yeah. Something needs to change. Yeah. I think the red uniforms fall off. The red, well, they're, yeah, they're in red uniforms now, they're so red, black uniforms. That, that might that might have something to do with this uh, this book being good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does look pretty good. The art's, the art's really nice. Well, Leonard Kirk's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I mean, his art is very clean. Uh, his the his transitions between panels, I think, are really good, and that's something we've talked about on the show before. Artists suffer from that. Yeah, some artists are horrible at transitioning panel to panel. Like you, you feel like you missed a panel in there. You don't know what the transition was. And, and honestly, I'm a big fan of James Robinson. Yeah, uh, as a writer. Overall, I think it was a good issue. I just, I just think that the formula is stale. This isn't a representation of the full series. But it, it's a good representation of Fantastic Four, and that's what needed to be for the first issue. So. Right, and, it, and it's got it's got an interesting setup for issue two. I mean, yeah, uh, we won't spoil the ending of the book here, but I mean, definitely it's a big, big bad problem. There's a red thing going to a green thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some something gets unsealed and and monsters come. But yeah, I mean, it it's reintroduces us to the characters. Uh, if you didn't read the end of the last Fantastic Four series, you might be a little lost as to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you probably experienced yeah. that because you didn't read the ending of the last one. Franklin and Valeria are their children. Valeria, suffice it to say, there was a bunch of lies and some distrust that was sown in their family, yeah. and she decided she didn't want to be a part of it anymore. She went to Latveria. Um, As two teenagers do. To stay with Doom, yeah. which um, Doom, I mean, recently Doom's not really been a bad guy. He, he's just Uncle, Do Uncle Doom. He's Uncle Doom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really don't understand. I mean, I, I think we're seeing something that hasn't happened yet here at the beginning. Yeah. Because they're, they're I mean, you know, Ben Grimm's in jail. Johnny's an alcoholic. I, I don't like, <laughs> I don't really understand how these events. Mr. Fantastic is tied in knots not knowing how to science. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know how to science. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I'd say, aside from my problems with the formula, it's, it's, it's a good issue. I love this little chocolate thing that they did. Franklin was inventing a, uh, what did he call it? They, they said they thought it was a death ray. Yeah. And it's, he it's, was it's, like, it's not a death ray. It's a, it performs molecular alchemy and converts unpleasant foods such as spinach into chocolate. <laughs> and his mom says, well, I'm not sure that's okay. But he, and he's got a really funny voice. But mom, it turns things into chocolate. And he says it again, chocolate! Like watch, he's really excited. Watch that be the the key to the to the full story. <laughs> the the, the ray defeat, that turns matter into chocolate. They defeat the bad guys by <laughs> by making them chocolate. Right. Um, and it's it's one thing that's in here that you know before we before we finish talking about this, Ben reuniting with uh, Alicia. Uh, Alicia, yeah, the blind girl, mm -hmm. which was kind of cool. I mean, the voice had kind of an on, on again, off again type of thing going on. And they're on again. And they're on again. He was out in space for a long time. That was the premise of the last series. That they were his relationship pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you're you know thousands of light years away, it puts a strain on things. <laughs> But uh, but so I'm going to have to see. I'm not sold after this first issue. I'm definitely going to come back for more just because I'm a fan. But uh, Fantastic Four number one from Marvel, start of a new series. Uh, pretty good. Check it out. Uh, I chose Cataclysm uh, Ultimate's Last Stand number five, which I said earlier is the conclusion uh, of this Cataclysm story. And just to give you a little background, back when they did Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. they time traveled too much. They, they played with time a little too much. So uh, a rift in time space allowed 
Galactus, the the actual Galactus from the regular Marvel Universe, to cross mm-hmm. over into the Ultimate Universe. And of course, he's always hunger. Just nomin so. on what he sees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he set his sights on the Ultimate Earth. We kind of thought for a while this might be the end of the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. But that's how it was advertised. It was. You know, in the aftermath of this, it seems like things are going to go on. I mean, the story kind of was up and down. There was a couple issues that were very slow and just kind of felt like filler. But I think that, that they they saved it with this conclusion. Like, it was a pretty solid conclusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, they brought back Mark Bagley to, to do the art. And I want to talk a little bit about that first because sure. this guy is fantastic. Like, mm-hmm. he, I mean... People have argued, I mean, you can look at this picture here with all the faces. People have argued that his faces look a little too similar. But I mean, when you're doing superheroes and they have costumes and they're very, you know, different in how they look, I don't really think that's too much of an issue. Uh, And he's evolved a lot. I mean, back when the Ultimate Universe was first launched in 1999, he was the artist on Spider-Man. And he took that through 100 plus issues. Um, which is unusual. Usually artists will switch or, yeah. or they'll get other offers. And uh, and they brought him back to do just this last issue, which I think is a good send-off because I don't think he's going to be a part of the, the next initiative of the no. Ultimate Universe. But suffice it to say, I mean, all the plans they made uh, throughout the entirety of the story kind of come to fruition here. We learned that Kitty Pride. Uh, within her powers, has the ability to... No, in, in the comics, it looked like they... Uh, Reed Richards did something to her or gave her something. But then later, she shrinks on her own without that device. It, it does seem like they do something to her that makes her grow. Yeah. But then later, she shrinks down on her own without whatever they did to her. So, I yeah. don't know. It's science. Reed Richards knows, knows what he's doing. It's science. Yeah, yeah, yeah see, like... It's, he just says Catherine go, and then she boom. Like, I think he unlocked a potential within her that she didn't know it's, existed. It's, it's the clap on size thing. <laughs> clap on, grow, clap, clap off. down. Okay. <laughs> That's humanity in the ultimate universe. It seems like he, he showed her a side of her powers that she didn't just didn't know exist. Yeah. So she grows essentially to the size of Galactus. And I think it was, I think it was kind of cool that Kitty was the one who got to save the world. Yeah. Like, she, that's something that you just wouldn't expect. She got pretty fisticuffs with him. Yeah, she did. And and her power of phasing through things, when she phases through machinery, it, it uh, disrupts that machinery. Yeah. And Galactus had created this thing to, uh, what, I don't remember it's, what they called it. Looks it looks like an engine. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, apparently it was something that was going to help him consume the planet. Because usually he's got heralds and stuff like that for those kinds of things that ready the planet for his consumption. And and that involved changing the core and, and the, there was all kinds of weird... Put onions on the side. Science. Yeah, a little ketchup, salt. It. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. But suffice it to say, I mean, uh, you know, the day gets saved by the heroes. The world engine gets destroyed. Yep. The, pretty much the whole issue is the battle between Kitty and Galactus. It winds to an interesting conclusion mm-hmm. where, I mean, it, it definitely doesn't have a solid ending. It definitely leaves no. a bunch of big openings for uh, like an aftermath book or, you know, what they're what they're planning on doing with the next wave of ultimate titles. But yeah, so it's, it's an interesting uh, conclusion to the story. And uh, I mean, I, all the issues are still readily available. Um, so if you're out there, you want to pick them up, we can still get them all. I think I probably still have all five of them here in the store, mm-hmm. uh, in the back issue bins. So yeah, Cataclysm, uh, Ultimate's Last Stand, check it out from Marvel. The trade we have chosen, like I said earlier, is uh, an old one, Flash Rebirth. An oldie but a goodie. It definitely looks well-loved. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the point of trades. Now, yeah. I don't want my comics to look well-loved, but mm. my trade looking well-loved, that's okay. Yeah. But Flash Rebirth, this was an interesting story. It's what brought Barry Allen back into the into the fold of the DC yeah. Universe. Um, and this is well prior to the New 52 relaunch and all of these things that have changed mm-hmm. uh, about the world recently. But uh, so for a long time bef- leading up to this series, I mean, the Flash story was Wally. It was Wally yeah. West who... It was Wally for a very long time. Long, long. I mean, that's... I grew up reading Wally. Yeah. I never knew Barry. I was aware of him, yeah. but I never knew him as a character. I never got to experience his stories. Um, so this was interesting to uh, to go back to. Um, they definitely pulled out all the stops. I mean, they got every speedster in the universe yeah. involved in this story. Um, the Speed Force really plays a big part of this tale. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't know what the Speed Force is out there, it is a an energy that the speedsters generate mm-hmm. when well, moving it, at super speed. It's almost more than than uh, than energy. It's it's almost a world. It's 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 kind of a, it's a place where you can get trapped and stay in a perpetual loop. Yeah. Essentially, a time loop. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's how they time travel. It's how the speedsters and Barry with the cosmic treadmill and stuff, it's how they figured out how to time travel is using the speed force energy to travel backwards or forwards in time. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, so uh, way back when they when they first took Barry out of the world, it was one of the crisis. So yeah, way back when when they did Crisis on Infinite Earths, Barry was using his speed to attempt to trap the Anti Monitor. Yeah. Attempt to stop. He had built a big machine. It was funny. We just talked about a machine that would devour the Earth. He had built a big machine too that was gonna turn all of reality into the antimatter. Oh, universe. the antimatter. Yeah, it oh. was gonna it was gonna convert all to antimatter. Barry ended up, uh, like I said, they thought he had died and sacrificed himself to mm -hmm. save them all. But he ended up. What this story told us was he ended up getting trapped in the Speed Force uh, with Johnny Quick. Uh, Johnny and Max were yeah. trapped in the Speed Force with Barry. Um, so this story brings him back. It also brought back uh, a character that we really hadn't seen for a long time up to that point, which is Eobard Thawne. Thawne, Reverse Flash. But yeah, and, and it also told us that Reverse Flash generates negative speed force. Yeah, this was a, a good uh, Jeff Johns curveball. I've always said he's very good at retconning things. I mean, yeah. Green Lantern Rebirth was a huge retcon. Like, mm -hmm. he managed just to fit what he's doing with his story. Like, oh no, that didn't happen. This in happened. with all the little pieces, and you this is how it always happened. You know, yeah. we just weren't told all the information at the first the first time seeing it. So essentially, Eobard Thawne, he wants to destroy Barry's life by going back in time yeah. and, and preventing the creation of Flash in the first place. There's always, he's always got all these crazy motives yeah. about what he's trying to do. Eobard's a crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, this also introduced us to the Black Flash. Well, yeah. reintroduced, it reintroduced us like, to yeah. the Black Flash, which uh, in this story was actually Barry. Mm -hmm. um, the Black Flash is caused by negative speed force. Mm -hmm. It is an entity that exists within the speed force that is meant to, I guess, call the time traveling nature. I mean, the speed force literally has the power to tear apart reality yeah. if used improperly. So the Black Flash existed as a, a way to stop this from happening. Yeah. And it's literally, I mean, he he accelerates your aging just as just by touching he's, you. He's the speed force Grim Reaper. But so uh, it winds to an interesting conclusion where all the speedsters have to yeah. to come together to stop him. They all need our help. And that was that was actually one of my favorite moments. Um in this moment, yeah, like where we actually get to see them all. I mean, this is this is yeah. a fantastic picture. Uh, where we get to see them all. It's a nice family portrait. To, it's a family portrait, exactly. Yeah. We got Barry, we got Wally, Bart. So yeah, it just it's it's a fantastic story. I mean, it's, it, it kind of they, it it helps you. There's a moment in the story where it's like, how are we gonna tell these two flashes apart? He's like, oh, I'll just make my outfit uh, darker yeah. and have smaller uh, loops around my waist and my arms. Exactly. They changed the costume so they can just, tell the just difference. a hint. <laughs> yeah. um, a little bit of this story is a little sciency. It's yeah. kind of hard to follow at some points unless you really are familiar with Flash and his story. But it's, it's, it's still very fun. This is the first Flash trade I read. Sure. I don't read uh, Flash every week or, any, or anything like that. This was the first, this is my introduction to Flash. Sure. And it was a very good one at that. And all the pieces come back too. Yeah. You know, you get you get here at the end, the rogues. When Barry came back, they they reorganized. They reorganized, them. yeah, and and became it's a time, team again. It's time for us to come back. But yeah, so all the rogue members came back together. Barry goes back to working at the police mm -hmm. department as a criminologist. Yeah. yeah, he was a crime scene. Yeah, um, and they have a big party for him and and welcome him back. And some cake. Yeah. <laughs> Green Arrow's there. I mean, all the heroes are there yeah. that were currently members of the Justice League at that time. It's um, a but, party. But yeah, it's an interesting book, and um, the trade is still very readily available. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, it's still in print because it's a pretty relevant one. I mean, Green Lantern Rebirth was another one that this same creative team did. But if you really want to see, uh, go back and see when Barry first got reintroduced into the world, I highly recommend it. I think Jams would agree with me. I would. Please, yeah. please do it. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> So that's going to bring us to the end. Um, uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment below if you want to hear us review something specific, trade, graphic novel, or uh, a comic that you'd like to hear talked about on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I think, James, you, ha you had something that you wanted to say. I did want to say that if you guys enjoy our little banter back and forth, it's because it does happen more often than just right here. It does. You guys, uh, <laughs> if you guys like radio, we are on uh, 89.5 uh, KCFE's The Friday Morning Frenzy, every Friday, 8 to 11. It's uh, streamed uh, 8 to 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time in from St. Louis, Missouri. But you can find us on Facebook, you can follow us, and listen in, and it'd be great, you can call in. You can find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash Friday Morning Frenzy. Yeah. 89.5, the wave, right?
So yeah, I want to give a very special thanks to Jams for uh, coming in and sitting with me and, and talking about stuff. Uh, if like, it's, like he said, if you want to hear us, hear some more of this uh, back and forth that we do, listen this uh, Friday, 8 to 11, 89.5. The best Jams ever. So we will be back next week again with more, uh, more comics and more awesome stuff to talk about. We'll see you then.